This is a $450 vacuum and this is a cup of unidentified white powder. After just half a cup, this vacuum is wasted. The filter is clogged and it can barely party anymore. Our mission is to mod this vacuum to have true cyclonic separation and turn it from Martin Sheen into Charlie Sheen. I got this vacuum because I didn't like the extra weight of add-on dust extractors or how quickly they clog up. It's got a large container, but I've only ever filled it a few centimetres before needing to clean the filter, so most of this volume is wasted. The outer part is somewhat cyclonic, but the dust is constantly disturbed, meaning it can end up in the filter. This inner cone looks like a cyclone from the outside, but there is no top, so any dust that goes through these holes goes straight up and into the filter. There is almost never any dust at the bottom of this inner cone, so it's kinda useless. To make it worse, the filter is a disc rather than the standard cylinder style. The pleats are tightly packed with reinforcing, which makes it very difficult to clean out. My plan is to 3D print a vortex finder and tangential inlets to turn this inner cone into a true cyclonic separator. Hopefully this will allow the vacuum to snort as much as Charlie Sheen and keep on partying. To demonstrate how quickly this vacuum loses flow, I set up a flow rate meter. I then get the vacuum to snort 10 gram lines of plaster of Paris before measuring the flow again. Plaster of Paris is just gypsum, which is what gypwok, drywall and plasterboard are made of and is a common construction dust. At regular intervals I weighed the canister and filter to see what percentage of dust was making it to the filter. We can see that after just 200 grams we've dropped 66% of the original flow and it struggles to pick up dust. By 320 grams we're at 52% of the original flow and I ended the test. The filter is absolutely chockers and cannot party anymore. The separation efficiency is fairly poor with 29% of the incoming dust making it to the filter. Industrial cyclones usually claim to let less than 1% through so there's a lot of room for improvement. There's over 60 years of published research on cyclone separators, with the Stearman design being something of a benchmark. But the Stearman design and even the shorter 1D, 2D design won't fit into the space we have as they're too long. Dyson vacuums use a much shorter design, but even that leaves no space for a collection chamber. This inner cone just isn't a great shape for a cyclone, so we're kinda stuck with polishing a turd. Cyclones have a complicated and high friction path for the air to follow, which reduces the flow rate. We want something that reduces the flow rate a little bit at the start, but maintains the flow for longer by keeping dust out of the filter. What we don't want is to reduce the flow so much that the vacuum is never usable. To do that we're going to try and keep the inlet and outlet area as large as possible. The top of the cone is 90mm. Standard cyclone designs have a vortex finder that is half this diameter, so 45mm, but we're going to push that out to 55mm. This necessitates shrinking the inlet width to 15mm so that the incoming airflow isn't blocked by the vortex finder. Keeping a 2 to 1 ratio for the height gives us 30mm and a 450 square millimetre inlet. The standard cyclone would have a 225 by 45 millimeter inlet for 1012 square millimetres. So we're at less than half of what we should be, which is going to lose us a lot of flow. The original vacuum's inner cone has an inlet area of 2,940 square millimetres, so 450 square millimetres is really going to hurt the flow rate. To get the inlet area up, I'm going to use multiple inlets. Five inlets was the most I could reasonably fit in, and this takes me to 2,250 square millimetres. This is double the inlet area of a standard cyclone, which will help reduce flow losses, but it will probably reduce the collection efficiency. However, we can block some of these inlets in order to tune the separator and find a happy medium between flow rate and filtration efficiency. Finally, we smooth the corners of the inlets as much as possible. This can reduce the pressure loss by a factor of 10 or more. Installing this mod turned out to be way more painful than I imagined and took several hours and making some custom tools. I finished it with cork to seal the gaps and smooth the transitions. In hindsight, I should have used builder's bog so that I could sand it to a smoother finish. Compared to the original vacuum, my mod reduced the starting flow by only 4%, which is pretty good considering we only have 76% of the original inlet area. This shows how much you can gain by having smooth edges. Filtration efficiency of the mod is much better, with only 5.8% of the dust making it to the filter, versus 29% in the original. 
After putting 320 grams into the vacuum, only 18.6 grams made it to the filter, compared to 86.8 grams of the original. Finally, we see the flow rate of the modded vacuum holds up much better, with the modded vac surpassing the original after just 80 grams of dust. After 320 grams, the modded vac has 40% better flow than the original. I also tried it with a 45mm vortex finder, but there was little difference in flow or filtration. Whilst this is a big improvement, I had been hoping for better, so I taped over some of the inlets and tested with only three inlets open. This reduced the airflow by 9% compared to the original, but still matched the original vacuum after just 80 grams of dust. Filtration efficiency was much better at only 3.5%, which allowed the 3 inlet mod to surpass the 5 inlet mod after 200 grams of dust. It worked well enough that I took it to 440 grams where it was still going strong. I tried again with just a single inlet, but this made the flow rate take a big hit, 25% lower than the original vac and close to the point where the vacuum struggles to suck dust up, but it did improve the filtration with only 2.8% of dust making it to the filter. The flow graph was flatter than any other mods, but the flow rate is so low that it's just not worth using. So we've improved the vacuum substantially, but not as good as I was hoping. We started at 29% and improved it to 5.8 or 3.5%, which is a 5 to 8 times improvement with only a 4 to 9% drop in initial flow. After snorting 320 grams of dust, our flow rates are miles ahead of the original vac. But I feel this is only finance bro levels of tolerance and not worthy of the Tiger Blood moniker. I want to try a multi-cyclone so that I can use tried and tested cyclone designs and not be stuck polishing a turd. For that, I'm going to need a bigger 3D printer. If you're keen to see me try and achieve Tiger Blood status, then let me know in the comments. Otherwise, there's still lots of electronics testing in the pipeline.